Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings us together today to receive messages from you. Thank you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Um, before I start, I would like to say that uh, sometimes I use Jesus Christ and Yeshua HaMashiach interchangeably. I hope that won't be a problem for anybody. Um, anyway, brothers and sisters in Messiah, we're only four weeks away from the Lord's Passover, our Passover, because God created Passover for you and I. Yeshua, our Messiah, gave his all so we could come, become free from sin. God, our Heavenly Father, is life. Sin is death. God cannot abide death in his presence, and sin equals death. God worked out the Passover and our salvation with Yeshua before the foundation of the universe. Here the scriptures I use will be from the New King James. In Leviticus chapter 23, verse 5, we read, On the fourteenth day of the first month at twilight is the Lord's Passover. This is God's invitation to each of us to become a member of his family. To do so requires repentance. We must ask for his help because repentance is a gift from God. We are told every year as we approach Passover, this is a time for serious self-examination. Today, I would like to examine our understanding of our current status with Abba, our Heavenly Father, and with our Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus. The sinfulness of this world separated this world from God, but he has a plan. There's a process going on in each of our lives. I would like us each to consider our part in that plan. What is our true position with Yeshua, Jesus, and God, our Heavenly Father? I have a question for you. How many of you know what a bond servant is? Any of you? Webster's defines a bond servant as a slave, also one bound to service without wages. A bond servant is property. Just like heat coming up here. Is there heat coming out of here? A person becomes a bond servant because they owe a debt that they can't pay. Their debt is written to a bond. When someone pays the price of the bond, they own the bond servant. That bond is held by the person willing to pay the price of the bond. The bond could be sold or gifted to someone else. A bond, servant, a bond is held by a person willing to pay the price of the bond. That bond could be sold or gifted to someone else. A bond servant is, was often placed in the lowest and most unwanted positions of a household or business. Positions such as cleaning after people or animals, or doing difficult and uncomfortable labor. If a bondservant was lucky, he might become an apprentice. Apprentices could be taught a trade or a way of life. The idea was to make them productive members of the community. In most cases, a bondservant had no say in who held their bond. The bondservant was the property of the holder of their bond. There were, however, rules to be obeyed under different governments, rules were different. In most cases, a bond servant had few rights. The rights were usually the protection of the bond holder. Now let's get down to cases. We've all been told that we have been bought for a price. That price was the blood, the body, and the life of our Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus. Each year at Passover, we have a memorial service. The purpose of this service is for us to remember Messiah Yeshua and his ordeal. That ordeal, ordeal was undertaken to redeem us from the penalty. What penalty, you say? The death penalty caused by our sin. Getting back to the memorial service, the ancient custom was for the lowest servant in the house to wash the feet of guests. A person was considered ritually clean except for their feet which had trod the earth. Yeshua performed the function of the lowest servant that night. First came the foot washing, cleansing from the world. 
Second, the bread, which represents his body, which was broken for us. We also need to remember, during his suffering, he took an awful beating. The Romans beat people with a cat of nine tails, nine leather strips with lead tips. This is referred to as his stripes. These so we could be healed. Could anyone show more love than Jesus and God? Third, the wine, which represents the blood being spilled out, which was shed to cover our sins and the sins of all the world. This shed blood is also to be our atonement before Abba, our Heavenly Father, our God. I'm sure that we are familiar with these passages around the Last Supper. Matthew 26, verse 26, starting there. And as they were eating, Yeshua took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins. We become a new vessel with repentance, baptism, and acceptance of Yeshua, Jesus' sacrifice. I believe if you accept Yeshua's sacrifice, you are bonded to him. He paid for you with his body, his blood, and his life. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, where Paul wrote, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you, whom you have of God, and you are not your own? For you were brought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. As long as we are in this life, we are short of our goal, becoming a member of God's family. Now we train for when we will become spiritual sons and daughters of God. Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah, our Savior, knew ahead of time the terrible cost and what was going to happen to him. He did not shy away from the awesome task that God set before him. Yeshua was never going to disappoint our Heavenly Father. He prayed, and in Matthew chapter 26, verse 39, we read, O oh my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you. And a while later, Messiah Yeshua prays a second time. In Matthew 26, 42, O oh my Father, if this cup cannot pass away from me, Unless I drink, your will be done. Always his Father's will be done. In Galatians 13, 3, we read where Paul wrote, Yeshua has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. Yeshua, Jesus, accepted being cursed for us, hung as a lowly criminal on a tree. This was also part of the price Yeshua paid. He accepted being treated as the lowest of the low. He did this as our loving shepherd in our place. We are the ones condemned by our sin. Remember, he undertook all of this for us because of his unquestionable love for every one of us. Understand this, God can't abide sin in his presence. To enter his presence, we must have our sins blotted out covered over, and have an acceptable atonement, the reparation of our sins. Our sins have a cost. I hope you've thought about the enormity of the commitment by Messiah Yeshua Jesus. He committed his body, his blood, and his life for you and I, not just for us, but for all the world and all the sins that mankind ever committed. We should also understand our Heavenly Father's enormous investment and his commitment to this undertaking. Think about God's faith in our Messiah Yeshua Jesus, as well as Messiah Yeshua Jesus' faith and absolute trust in Abba, his Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father. In Romans 3, verse 23, it reads, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
and 24 it says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Messiah Yeshua, Jesus, whom God sent forth to be a propitiation for, by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because of his forbearance. God had passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he might be just and be justified of the one who has faith in Yeshua Jesus. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, it reads, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Yeshua, Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Yeshua Christ. In verse 5, Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ, to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. I'm not sure, but I believe from what we read here, Yeshua did the choosing. I had always thought the Father chose us, but I think Yeshua chose us and the Father approved us. In Ephesians 1, 7, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Yes, we have been purchased, you and I, at a great price, our Messiah's life, body, and blood. Dead or alive, we are God's property. He purchased our bond with his son's life, body, and blood. Were we not his property, we could not, he could not raise us from the dead. Be thankful he owns your bond. I repeat 1 Corinthians 6.19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Think about what that means. We are God's property. God purchased you and I with his son Yeshua's lifeblood, his body and his blood. In 1 Corinthians 6.20, For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. In 1 Corinthians 7.23, You were bought with a price. Do not become the slaves of men. We are bonded to God and apprenticed to Messiah Yeshua, Jesus, and God's work in Messiah Yeshua, Jesus. What does this mean to you and I? Body and spirit, we belong to God. All creation is his. This includes us. However, God has made an extra effort with you and I, and that is the bond purchase, the life, blood, and body of Messiah Yeshua. This was done so that we would understand he has, a special, has made a special effort and has a double claim on us. God wants good care taken of his property. We are his property. Are we taking good care of his property? How do we take care of his property? Consider all the works in your life. Are they to the glory of God? I would like to say in my life they are, but to my shame, I know that would not be true. Now a little happier thought. 1 Thessalonians 3.11 Now may our God, the Father himself, and our Lord Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you to increase and abound in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless, in holiness before God the, and Father at the coming of our Lord Messiah Yeshua and all his saints. Do you want to be there? I do. I hope and pray I will. Think about that. All the saints. All the saints. Why are we bonded? We're bonded because we are learnt to learn, to grow, and to teach God's covenant. Colossians 1.10 tells us that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Brothers and sisters, we have work to do. My friends, we are bonded to God and apprenticed to our Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus. We are expected to do our duty to God 
and to follow his instructions and live within God's covenant. We are meant to be a shining example to those who watch us in our daily lives. We are to be that light on a hill for all the world to see. In Colossians 1.11, strengthening with all might according to his glorious power for all the patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks unto the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his son, the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Brethren, we are expected to mature and grow spiritually. Yeshua, Jesus, came as our example. He asked our Heavenly Father to give us the Holy Spirit so that He, Yeshua, Jesus, can live in us. Are we cooperating? Brothers and sisters, without Messiah's sacrifice, we would have been lost forever. Yet you and I are to have a part as an inheritance with the saints. That's quite an incredible future. Again, I say we are meant to be a shining example to those we encounter in this life. About Messiah Yeshua, we read in Colossians 1.15, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him for him. There is a wonderful divine plan at work in our lives. Are we doing all we can to support the work being done in us? I find the more I examine my decisions in my life, the more I find room for improvement. Little things can and do trip me up. I caution you, rigid thinking can cause stumbling blocks. Try to remain open-minded. Don't get trapped in dogmatic thinking. Keep your mind open. Remember, only God knows all the answers. When I look around and I examine life in general, what I see can be very scary. Because Satan is very busy. Let's not forget, Satan also has a plan. He wants to cause doubt to enter our minds, as he did in the Garden of Eden. Satan created doubt with a lie. Eve believed the lie. Adam most likely knew better. Disbelieve and doubt can equal sin. Think about that. Folks, when I read the following verses, I get a real thrill because I believe these verses are about us, you and I. In Matthew 15, 24, Matthew wrote, the Messiah said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That, friends, I believe is you and I. And in Matthew 18, for the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Look around. Look at your neighbor. We, you and I, are the lost sheep of Israel. In Matthew 10, 5, Yeshua sent his disciples out. And he said, these 12 he sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. God knew where they were. Yeshua, Jesus, knew where they were. They know who and where we are. Messiah Yeshua, Jesus, came to save you. He came to save me. He came with a mandate from his Father, save as many as you can. We are Messiah Yeshua's lost sheep. The parable of the lost sheep is about us. It is about coming back into the fold and gaining our salvation. This parable is to let us know that every one of us is important to our shepherd Yeshua and God our Father. We're given a warning in Matthew 24, 44. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. And that reads on a little further. 
My friends, Satan's going to try to trick you or sway you or sidetrack you and me by any means he can. He's the father of lies. He will try to get us to believe his lies so he can steal our salvation. Don't let him. Be inspired. Let us do it as, as it is written. You can turn to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Let's face it, folks. We need to be on our toes. We need to have our guard up all the time. In 1 Peter, he tells us, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Brethren, because we don't see the devil doesn't mean he isn't busy. Believe me, Satan and his fallen angels are very busy until the end of this age. And, and I'll say here also that uh, the closer we come to Passover or any of the holy days, then the more active he gets to try to disrupt our lives. Satan knows his time is short. God's Messiah is coming to claim his kingdom. Let's always remember that our good shepherd takes good care of his sheep. If you turn to Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Messiah, Christ, have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accused them before God day and night, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. Paul addressed the time after the thousand years and what will happen then. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 24, and you can read along with me. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God, he being the Messiah, to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and all power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. For he has put all things under his feet, but when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted that being the Father. Now when all things are made subject to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things under him, that being God the Father, that God may be all in all. I ask you, what does God have to say? So let's see what John wrote down. If you turn to Revelation chapter 21, verse 3. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from every eye. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. I will be his God, and he will be my son. At this point, we will be, our, at this point, we will be with our Heavenly Father. We will have become members of God's spiritual family and community. I can't speak for you, but as for me, I'm one of the lucky ones. I'm thrilled that I'm Yeshua's apprentice and God's bondservant. I can't think of a better master or owner. I'm thrilled that he knew me before the foundation of the world. Just as he chose us, in him before the foundation of the world, 
that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Well, we're all working on that to get there. Well, he selected us long, long ago before the foundation of the universe. He knew us before we were in our mother's wombs. That doesn't mean we can't mess it all up. So let's pay attention so that we don't. And in Revelation 22, verse 12, he says, and, become, and behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter the city through the gates into the city. The city here is the New Jerusalem. We should always remember to whom we belong and to whom we are apprenticed to, our loving God and his son, our shepherd, our Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus. This is kind of short, I know, but <laughs> sorry, I thought it was longer. Um, I will end with this loving scripture from Numbers chapter 6, verse 22. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, in this way you shall bless the children of Israel, saying to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Well, that sounds to me like God's name is Israel, among others. Thank you, brothers and sisters. <laughs>